Hey everyone, this is Grubby with a One Stop Nova Guide. One Stop Nova Guide, you may ask, why play Nova? Well, Nova is damn fun, first of all. Another thing is that Nova, when played well, can create an early game advantage that can last throughout the game if you keep hold of it. It can create a momentum wave for your team, and with that early game advantage, you may be able to never lose that advantage and close the game out. She has some cute emotes after fragging people, like nice, and that's why I make the big bucks. I do enjoy some good emotes after frags. Finally, she's great for stomping people in quick match and the perfect hero for people who like to play FPSs. Okay, Nova, is she actually legit at higher levels? This is a valid question. Now, Nova has seen some play in Go For Heroes by some professional EU teams. However, she may have just been chosen to illustrate the predetermined dominance that one team has over another. But hey, even in, in competitive gaming, it's important to sometimes show how much better you are than the opponent, right? By picking an off-center, off-meta hero and still winning with it. So she is legit, maybe not the very highest top tier at the moment, but such things always change. Um, are there multiple builds possible with Nova? You may have seen some of my other one-stop guides thus far, such as Muradin Guide, Hammer, Zeratul, or Uther. But are there different builds possible? Usually I show two to three different builds, and I say, for this situation like this, for this situation like that. Now, with Nova I tried a lot of different builds to prepare for this guide, and in the end, yes, there are some deviations possible in the talent choice at level, one for uh, level 10, level 13, level 16. There are different choices, but it's not gonna change her playstyle a whole lot. I go either for the decoy build or for the uh, super burst build, which I will show you in just a minute. And there's also a valid choice between different level 20 uh, talents. But you may wonder, what about the AOE snipe build? Uh, for example, railgun or explosive round. Like, it's cute. But it's not good, in my opinion, for a number of reasons. One of which is that it changes your positioning. If you look at Railgun, it penetrates through people your snipe and does 50% damage to everyone behind the first target. Now, that means that you should make sure that your opponents are in a line. This usually is achieved by attacking the warrior and then hitting everyone behind it. But you need the proper range that your penetrating round also reaches the back line. So you need to be pretty close to the warrior at the back of your own uh, allies front line. So you stand at the back of your team and you shoot and then it passes through people. But the, bo the most damage is done on the warrior. That's not usually who you'd like to be focusing. Furthermore, any area of effect heroic abilities or basic abilities that the enemies do on your team, your front line or your back line, is gonna hit and reveal you as well. And Nova is very squishy. So I'm gonna show just two builds and I'll choose one in a Hero League exhibition match that I'll play right afterwards. Okay, let me show you what I have prepared for you. Here. This is the Burst Nova. It's pretty much the highest possible burst damage against a single target while uh, still being a good team fighter Nova. We start with Ambush Snipe. Uh, ambush Snipe does 25% bonus damage when you snipe someone as you come out of cloaking. Gathering power gives you extra ability power which adds bonus damage to all your abilities and your heroics. Anti-armor shells allows you to attack two and a half times as fast, uh, as slow, but two and a half times as hard. So while your basic DPS doesn't change, you can channel two and a half worth of basic attack into a single attack, which means you are free to recloak afterwards and it makes you safer. You could go for one in the chamber there. At level seven, one in the chamber, it adds 50% bonus damage for every time you do a spell in your following basic attack. But it would require you to do something like crippling shot, I mean pinning shot, basic attack, snipe, basic attack, decoy, basic attack. Now you're revealed for two, two and a half seconds, then you can start to run away and try to cloak yourself, which takes another three seconds. So you're revealed for at least five seconds. Whereas if you do everything, you do pinning shot, snipe with a basic attack, and then you start running away, you only take half a second to cast everything and you're free to cloak in three and a half seconds. 
it makes you a lot safer and you can start doing another burst of round when you have your cooldowns back again. For level 10 I go for Precision Strike. Precision Strike is great in team fights where the enemy is clustered up. It's also a great tool one on one when the opponent is running along a predictable path away from you. You may have just done your cooldowns, you do a pinning shot, a snipe and a basic attack. Now the enemy starts running and they're probably less than half life. They start running and you do a precision strike in front of them. Now they have a choice, walk through it and risk death or certain death or diverge from their path, come back in your firing range and you finish her off with your basics. Now precision strike is very versatile. There is triple tap but it has a few disadvantages. One, you reveal your location for a certain long period of time. Two, it can get body blocked by enemy allies. Three, it can get body blocked by things like the opponent's decoy or walls or buildings or towers. Finally, uh, it is a channeling one, so it can potentially get cancelled if you uh, get interrupted or stunned. Now you can improve that a little bit with good positioning. The, the firing range of triple tap is very long. So it is true that triple tap can be a legit choice, but it's still, it's just single target damage. And I like to also build a bit for team fights. From level one to 13, I like, or one to 15, I like to do a lot of hunting, but at 16, I want to be a true team fighter accessory, which is why I go for crippling shot there. Let's look at level 13. Level 13, the only talent that does extra damage there between Spell Shield, Lethal Decoy, Advanced Cloaking and Headshot, the only one that does extra damage is Lethal Decoy, whereas Headshot has the potential to do more damage because it lowers your cooldowns every time you kill an enemy hero. But Lethal Decoy is the certain one, that's why I choose it. It also creates a little bit more confusion, which one is the real Nova? Finally, Lethal Decoy does one of every ability. It does a basic attack for you or more, it does a pinning shot for you, and it does a snipe for you. Each one will hit with only 25% worth of damage, but it's really cool that it does a pinning shot for you. Because this is a real pinning shot that really slows people, and it really adds the level 16 talent of crippling shot. So say for instance you are a triple tapper. And you, uh, you, you, you have the build that I have listed here with Lethal Decoy and Crippling Shot. You cast a Crippling Shot on the opponent. You'll be quite close to them because the firing range isn't that long. Then you do a Triple Tap. The first two Triple Taps will have 25% bonus damage because Crippling Shot gives 25% bonus damage of all damage taken for a certain amount of time. Including your allies' attacks and spells, but also for your own. So your first two Triple Taps is uh, bonus damage, but the last one isn't. But if you do crippling shot and you do a lethal decoy next to them, and then you start your triple tap, the first two are bonus damage from your own, and then your decoy is nice enough to add another crippling shot on them, making your third one do bonus damage as well. It's a very powerful mechanic that it adds the bonus damage as well. Yeah, crippling shot is amazing to focus on anyone, even warriors. It works like Tyrande's Hunter's Mark, like the Northern Exposure for Jaina. These are very powerful abilities. Bonus damage on single target. And if you attack the one uh, which is currently taking damage from your teammates, you are a true team fighter Nova bro. Finally, Bolt of the Storm. We could go for Rewind here and go for a Crippling, Snipe, Basic Attack, Rewind, Crippling, Snipe, Lethal Deco, etc. And it's a really powerful burst. And I encourage you to try out how Rewind works for you. It's powerful. Uh, I choose Bolt of the Storm so that I have both of my only escape in the game, as well as potentially chasing down people and killing them as they try to run away. This also adds damage, just as Rewind does. And I find that losing my life with Nova is too critically bad, especially since I am banking on gathering power stacks. When you lose your life as a hero, you lose all gathering power stacks, and you go back from 15% to 5%. That's why I value both of the storms so highly. Let's look at the second build. I call this Killzone Nova. It's not a name I came up with myself, but it's this popular build that's going around right now. And I've tried it. It's good. It's basically the same in the basic premises as the other build, but it changes the level 16 talent. Instead of going for Crippling Shot, which adds a lot of utility to all of your teammates, 
you make a second decoy. Now the way it works is this. The first decoy can be aimed in an area of your choosing, just like before. But the double decoy will place at your own feet. So if you do use Alt E, Alt is to cast the spell at your own feet, no matter what it is. It's called self cast. If you do Alt E, suddenly two illusions spawn at your own feet. And it will be difficult for the opponent to know which one is the real one. You can also cast your decoy somewhere else and one starts moving where you are. Kind of this can be bad because let's say if you are in bush number one and they are in bush number two and you put, or let's say they're near bush number two, you put a decoy in bush number two and they somehow know it's not the real one. And then suddenly your decoy comes from the left from bush number one, the second decoy, then they know that you were there until recently. Whereas if you have just a single decoy and you place it in a bush number two and he sees it, he doesn't know if you were left, bottom or right because maybe he didn't have vision of it. So there can be a disadvantage in double decoy. Just make sure to use it smartly because you don't want to use it dumbly. Um, but double decoy is really cool. It adds more damage, more pinning, crippling shot, uh, not crippling shot, but more pinning shot, more snipes and more confusion. And to make the confusion complete, we go rewind at level 20. So you can have up to four decoys at the same time. If you meet someone in a one-on-one -on -one and you snipe them, you pinning shot them, you basic attack them, you make four decoys with a rewind and then snipe and pinning shot them again. It is very likely that whoever it is, even if it's Arthas or Diablo himself, that they will perish under the assault of your five Novas fire. Okay, these are the two builds, and I will choose which build I'm going to go for in the Hero League based on my evaluation of the situation. So, to summarize, Nova has a few key strengths. She has high burst damage, she's permanently cloaked. It forces a different playstyle from the opponent to deal with her, because you can really make opponents afraid in their lane. It forces overly much grouping. Because every time the opponent thinks they're in a one-on-one -on -one with your Vala or your Muradin, suddenly you can be there. So make sure to use that fear factor to the fullest effect. Um, yeah, and then you can get an early game advantage and never give it away. Now some key weaknesses. She has no actual escape until level 20, and that is if you take Bolt of the Storm. Decoy is just an illusion of escape. Advanced cloaking at level 13 can help with an escape because you get 25% movement speed increase while cloaked and unhorsed. So if you can cloak and you can keep running, you can get away better. And I always choose it when the opponent's team has an Illidan. I sacrifice the lethal decoy damage and utility and get advanced cloaking instead. More life, more movement speed while cloaked. You don't always have a chance to mount up and run away. That's why it was part of the build number one as an alternative choice. And this is somewhat of an escape. Furthermore, Nova has a really low HP pool, health pool. She has poor wave clear and poor objective collection. It is risky for her to try and take the Dragonshire, uh, the Dragonite, if the opponent is trying to poke you away from it. Because you're broadcasting where you are and you're one of the most hated heroes in the game. So, uh, it's risky. Finally, without ability stacks, for example, you took and venom or uh, you died after you took gathering power and also while your team is at lower hero levels than the opponent it is more difficult because with nova it's a numbers game more than other heroes nova relies on positive momentum and it's your job to try and get that for your team coming back from two three even four hero uh, level deficit is possible and it's been done and sometimes new players to Heroes of the Storm don't know that, but it's possible. It's a little bit more difficult with Nova because she relies on pure raw power. Take for instance a hero like Stitches. Your team is level 15, the opponents are 18. It's not a good situation, but if you get a hook and a follow-up stun and pick-off, that hero is dead all the same. With Nova, if you can't go off by yourself to solo someone and you don't have enough you know, numbers, not enough damage, it's not quite the same value. So. You need to get an early advantage. Finally, a few do's and don'ts, and then I'll start my Hero League game. Do. Do be aware of where every opponent on the map is at all times. Do be like a hyena. Pick off the weak and the sick. Give the healthy white birth. Do, and finally, the third one. Do be aware that players can spot your cloak distortion. Pretend as if you are seen at all times, and you'll be a happier 
to lift the tail of it. Try to intuit where people are and how many people are in that situation. The don'ts. Don't feel guilty leaving your team in a lurch if they are fighting a losing battle that has gone sour. You are not someone to help extricate your allies from enemy lines. It's better to save yourself, save your life, save your stacks and live to fight another day. So long as you are alive, people are wary and therefore play more cautiously and more safe. Or if they do take a risk, you will punish them. But if you're dead, everyone breathes a collective sigh of relief, even as your allies groan, Nova died. Uh, so it's, it's important to stay alive. It's not worth it for you to do a one for one. You kill someone, you die, you lost your stacks. They probably didn't. And yeah, then the, the ability power. And maybe if they're three levels ahead, it's worth it to kill them and die because of the XP gain is better for you, but generally you don't. Don't engage 1v2, 1v3, 1v4, 1v5. Now this seems like basic knowledge for many heroes, but it's possible for some heroes to win a 3v4 or to engage in a 1v2 and just escape. But you have no escape. So even if you see that there's an enemy hero with 30% life, like a Tyrande, don't go in and kill her if she's surrounded by a Diablo and uh, uh, an Uther. Like even if you can kill her, you're probably going to die. And it's not worth it. Finally, don't be like that Nova that doesn't do any siege damage. Like that Nova the other day that I played with who had 91 siege damage at the end of the game. It's okay for you to help a bit with killing murkamps and minion waves. It's also okay for you to passively lane in a lane to do a 1-1-3 and you're one of the three. You, you don't have anti-armor shells yet, you have normal attack speeds, you are surrounded by allies, you can be safe. You can kill people together. You don't have to always roam and make yourself less effective at wave pushing or helping your allies with mercs. Be diverse. Okay, that was it. Now I'm gonna go to the Hero League game and I'll choose one of the two builds and I'll explain my thoughts constantly in a stream of, thought, stream of consciousness commentary. Enjoy guys. Okay, we found a game. So this is where I let my team know that I'd like to go for Nova. <laughs> Nova first pick on Haunted Mines. I'm with Guardsman Bob, Black Freeze, Street, and King Doctor. I'm asking if they mind if I play Nova. They are not answering. They are not answering. Okay, someone said yes. I have a go ahead. <laughs> Black Freeze doesn't know yet. I told them I'm going Nova because I'm doing a one-stop guide on her and I've never lost the game where I went for one-stop guide hero yet, but this could be the first. So Tassar is a good choice on Haunted Mines. He can shield the towers and the forts, prevent them from dying to the golem. Can I not play here, please? Okay, so we've got a pretty good team so far. We've got a healer, we've got a secondary support in Tassadar, who's also good at defending against the shields. Um, Lily will make Illidan miss his attacks with the Blinding Wind, which is nice. Vala is a good general all-purpose ranged damage dealer. 
I've got Nova. Now, don't underestimate Nova's burst damage to Illidan. It's pretty good. Abathur might be something that I'll look to kill in the mid to late game, but I shouldn't go too much out of my way for it, because I'll be deep behind enemy lines, and unlike Zeratul, I don't have Bolt of the Storm or Blink. Oh, I have Bolt of the Storm at level 20. But. Diablo's, Diablo's a pretty good choice, so is ETC. Uh, ETC and Diablo both have Stun and Displacement, both of which is valuable against Illidan. Main point of this game is that Illidan will be buffed in an epic fashion by Abathur. Stitches is some nice pickoff. Maybe he will go for Gorge, maybe Putra Bow, I don't know yet. Zagara is their main ranged damage dealer. And she is relatively squishy, but she has teeth. There's something that she can do against Nova. As soon as she puts one of those Hydralisks on me, I will be continually revealed so long as I stand in the range. Uh, that will damage me a lot, and it makes me a big threat. I mean, it makes me much at risk, much in danger. Furthermore, every time she casts something like Roachlings, Hydralisk, or Banelings, that's something that my snipe can miss on. So I might be trying to snipe her if she casts something, and my snipe hits that instead. So we're going to push the wave here, and uh, let's see what the opponent does. I expect if Zagara, well, let's see, if Zagara goes for Demolitionist, we need to hunt her. Zagara is Demolitionist, we hunt her rather than trade push. Bana stay top, that's on me. Uh, it's not good to ignore, it's it please follow to ignore Zagara with Demolitionist because she can outpush anything that we could possibly do. So we just go deep push. Zagara is a better deep pusher than anything that we have. A better pusher too. So you see, Nova can help with wave clear. It's not only about getting the secret roams. I think they might be heading to the top now. No, Sakara is still here. We can come from behind. Um, yeah, let's go hunt ETC and then go down. I mean, stitches. Back down. See, her demolitionism is already heavily at work. It's better to deep push, we have the better fighting team for now. There's no uh, Abathur effect yet, which is very, very scary. So we get these last minion ways, and then we go in. Go get the skulls. The biggest skulls are in the middle. The biggest ones are in the middle. We should get them first. I'll go for uh, gathering power. Got some good kills here. Killing 
So we're all gonna heal now and then go in again. Their avatar, let's see, where are his locusts coming from? It looks like they're still coming dutifully from the base. Which means he's not like mid, mid lane soak. Oh yeah, he's right here. He's right here. That's what I would do too. And that's what you should do. You should soak from here. That's where I always go to, and it's the right thing to do, but I look out for it. Okay, we're gonna get these heroes back and they're not gonna be able to do the boss yet. Oh, I missed the snipe. We're, we're fine, we're fine. They can't do the boss like this. Not to mention that we'll probably catch Illidan. Okay, do the boss. They're all healing. Okay, now anti-armor shells. Always move between shots. It's always already important to move between shots, but all the more so with anti-armor shells. Okay, let's go to the middle. It's important to get the siege chains, but we don't cap them too soon. And always get all the lane XP as well. Don't don't neglect that. Okay. One good way of preventing an early capping of the golem is by just not taking it too soon. Ideally, you don't want to take the golem until their golem. I mean, the siege chains until their golem is at their gate. Whoa. Nice displacement by ETC. Now we get the stitches. I like to try and get the seed chance. It's a little bit risky because it would put me by myself. But if people help me, we might be able to do it. If you kill the giants, the golem keeps a lot more of its life. It's worth way more than trying to kill a hero. Heroes don't do as much damage as two siege giants, so I'm glad that we killed them quickly. Okay, precision strike now. That was close. Oh, nice job, guys. Nice job. So now we have that momentum shift that I was talking about. We've got the momentum to um, keep keep up the advantage, keep attacking, support giants at the bottom. And this is where Nova really shines. And I'm glad to be having a game like this. I'm gonna tap the well so that I've got more mana. And then we're gonna push bottom and support the giants. What this does is it paves the way for a keep kill eventually, but it also allows us to utilize these giants to get XP here and uh, yeah we get XP from this killing these towers like it's on the other side of the golem but it should not be neglected I've got to be careful of a hook if I get hooked I'm probably dead so I just stay make sure that things stay in between me and stitches Just keep him hurt. Just 
Just taking the tower. Now Uther left. Yeah, killing Fountain is worth a lot. Now they cannot have an easy drink anymore in between mines. That's a good choice to kill that. Just keep him low. They don't have any free healing like Heal Ward. They only have Uther's heal. Go to kill the monstrosity. We're almost 13. The monstrosity is still alive. Okay, because the enemy has an Illidan, I take advanced cloaking. Okay, nice, we get to go. Okay, nice. We can get Uther too, I think. Uh, start the boss. He's trying to keep me busy here. I'm okay with that. So Monstrosity already died. It did do good damage against that fort, but I don't mind too, too much. Okay, good. They're getting the Bruiser Camp now. We should get our Siege Giants again. Um, yes. Get that again. Careful, they just finished the bruiser. may have sprint now I need to check quickly yeah it does so it's have to be careful oh they eat Lily Lily's dead no Lily no push Siege Giants as well. Actually, Tassadar is low, Lily is dead, so that's kind of the end of the push. Next time, let's only meet the yeah, like We leave one spell until we arrive. So it's not 50% of the we get there. I hope they'll stick to it. Let's see if it get, goes like that. Let's support here, get the XP, get level 16. Uther's top, two top, three, three top. They're gonna push as well, most likely. But we need the XP. Well, we don't need it more, I would say, but we are uh, getting 16 from this, and we're gonna push on to their keep already, sooner than then. Okay, I expect there should be a monstrosity at top soon. 
We can actually find. Use the decoys to block for hooks. Nice one. Very nice, uh, mosh pit. Nice time too. We got one pick off. We used three alts. It's quite emo. This is where they're gonna be, I think here, because some people already went in. Illidan's coming from top. Nova, best skull clear EU. Okay, nice body blocking there. And Illidan by himself. <laughs> okay, I think we're gonna get him. Okay, so dude, that's... Once I hit that crippling shot, he takes more damage, he's slowed and everything. It's really good. Let's see, how much damage? Make sure that if you're uncloaked, you first cloak again before you do your ambush snipe. So for instance, I do a basic attack and a snipe. I need to wait two and a half seconds till my next basic, but I rather wait three seconds so I can also have bonus damage on my snipe, like this. 867 instead of 642. And also, if you're doing bosses, oh, oops. <laughs> My bad. I wanted to leave on. I forgot myself because I was talking. Yeah, let's go. All attack. Tassa, no death now. Go fast, ignore waves. I will use one precision, maybe, on waves. I don't want to get there when the golem is already done. Smosh pit! Jeez! Okay, first spinning shot before basic attack and so forth. Oops. GG, well played, guys. He got rooted. But he cleansed! <laughs> yeah, GG well played, nice. And because I never died, I've got 5 stacks. So the advanced cloaking against the monstrous Illidan who chases you down and kills you wasn't strictly necessary. And it would have been nice if I had lethal decoy, but I take it for safety and so long as you stay alive you're gonna do a lot of damage with nova a nice game uh haunted minds i wouldn't say nova is perfect here but we made it work we have some good players on the team nova is super fun to play um especially if you hit all your skills on someone or if you ever get to a one-on-one -on -one, you have so much burst potential and it's hella fun right now it's nova free week so I hope I haven't made your life worse by educating your opponents how to play, but maybe it's a good idea for you to try out some Nova now, see if you like to play this hero, and ignore all the people that say Nova is, is a bad tier, it's just tier 5 and so on. Why are we playing this game? It's for fun, right? And if you're a pro and you're watching this, well, first of all, I'm honored, but I'm sure that even pros, as I saw in Go for Heroes, can make Nova work, get an early game lead, and ride out that momentum to the end of the game. Thanks very much for watching guys, I stream pretty much every day on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash followgrubby, make sure to come and follow me there, and stay tuned for the next one stop hero guides and map guides. Thanks for watching guys, have a great day, great night, and see you next time, bye.